Uh, welcome to today, today's team project presentation regarding our solution on designing a digital World Cup organizing manual. This project was conducted um, in collaboration with this, the International Ski Federation. So also from our side, a special thanks uh, to the ASTS Scientific Committee and Marcel Luis from the FIS for being here with us today and uh, we look forward to inform you about the progress of our project today. Um, so to quickly start off, uh, I would like to introduce our team to you. Um, presenting today with me is Jeffrey Allen, uh, our team project manager, Leil Lang, our research coordinator and myself, Johanna Murawa, the content coordinator. So when you are given the task to develop the first World Cup um, organizer manual, we knew it's going to be a challenge. One big federation, including six very different disciplines, ranging from alpine skiing, Nordic combined, <coughs> cross country, freestyle skiing, ski jumping, to snowboard. So really six different disciplines. And uh, those disciplines um, organize 330 events throughout the year. So an organizer organizing such a World Cup event really has to work with a lot of different stakeholders and a lot of different people, um, including spectators, athletes, national uh, federations, teams, local authorities, media, and many more. Um, so it is a really complex task to organize such an event and also to organize or to manage, create this manual, our project, but we quickly learned the potential this project could have for these uh, events and the further development of these events. Um, so we made it to our mission to create a cross-disciplinary, thorough, easy-to-use manual relevant to the World Cup organizers of all disciplines and to further increase the coherence and consistency across all these events. And so to summarize our objectives, the manual should be easy to use, it should increase or enhance the consistency across all the disciplines and all the events, and we wanted to provide operational guidance, especially for the new and inexperienced organizers. Um, so, but before actually putting the manual together, we really uh, figured out we need to do our research first. So we contacted various uh, federations from other sports, while doing this, we chose them um, with different um, aspects. We wanted other sports that are also organized, if possible, outdoors, and also uh, other sports who organize a series or a tour of events. Because a World Cup event, it's not a one-off event. It reoccurs every year, and there are, as I said, a great number of events throughout the year. So we spoke to the International Basketball Federation International Triathlon Federation and International Chido Federation. And uh, besides that, we also had the chance to go to Maribel to the um, World Cup Finals, which was really beneficial and we we're really grateful to FIS that this was possible, because as you can imagine, as students, we have never organized such an event ourselves. So it was good to go on site to really get the feel for how everything is set up, how everything works, especially at the finals, it was one of the Al alpine skiing finals, it was one of the biggest events. So Jenny, Marcel's colleague, was really patient and nice, showing us around the whole day on site, um, explaining everything we needed to know. Then we also contacted a design agency, which reviewed our design and layout and our functions throughout the project. And also we spoke to a company based on the EPFL um, campus, uh, specialized in the application, online application development, so we discussed different options, what we could do on, from the technical side. In the end, we chose uh, the PDF, because it's still, you can do all the interactive uh, digital functions, and it's compatible with all systems and um, all different devices, which is really necessary by that great number of stuff that is involved. Um, yeah, and we also got access to selected organizing committees who gave us their feedback, what they would like from such a project, what they need, what could be improved, which was also really beneficial. Then, last but not least, we also obviously had to go through all the contact provi content provided by FIS, 
mainly through the website and their uh, knowledge transfer system. And there are already a lot of handbooks out there um, divided by the different disciplines or uh, different functional areas. So we read through all of them, sorted them, summarized them, and made ourselves really familiar with all that content that's out there. So what did we learn from our research? First, the major finding was the current material is too lengthy. As you can read in the quote, this special organizer wished for a more concentrated document where you don't have to read through 200, 300 pages worth of text. The second uh, finding was language barriers, they really don't make the organizer's life easier. Especially us being here in Switzerland, three, better four, official languages. Not everyone does speak English out there in organizing the event. So either they had to translate uh, sections or um, it was just hard if everything relies on text. And then our third finding was that the local organizers said um, that they are unsure of the organizing timeline. So um, they either had to create their own documents or really inform everyone what to do when. Um, so overall we found we really need some or a set of creative solutions here to allow the end user to thrive. So how did we do that, Jeff? Thank you very much, Joanna. So how did we do this? How did we bring all of these elements together to create a nice solution for our client? So first, we cut down the content. We used what was necessary to make it very concise and readable for the end user, which can be seen through the summation of the six major sections within the manual. As you can see, here are the main sections that we use, the general public, communications, field of play, athlete services, the toolbox, and the finish area. And so these, these different sections were categorized based on the different commonalities across all of the disciplines. So then, by adding visuals also to the manual, we're able to reduce uh, the, the reliance on text. And by doing this, we're able to also reduce the language barrier, which helped with the comprehension of all the information, as well as left a, a long-lasting impression on the LOCs. Next, so next came the toolbox. Very often, these first-time organizers, uh, they don't have reliable timelines. They typically move from uh, activity to activity, uh, purely based on completion. So sometimes there's not much rational thought behind it. And this often provides for a poor foundation and a lack of fluidity throughout their operations. So, our toolbox. Our toolbox was based on three basic pillars to help build a strong foundation. They were meant to help drive productivity, to help improve communications, and also to reduce time-consuming tasks. And so the three tools that we focused on, which I'll explain more in depth later in the presentation, were templates, checklists, as well as the glossary. So let's take a look at how all these elements came together, and let's give you an example of what the manual looked like. So as you can see here, here is the first page, the cover page of the actual manual. And as you'll be able to see, we have all the different disciplines located at the bottom with it each its own respective icon. Now each icon is not just as only aesthetically pleasing, but also serves a purpose throughout the manual. So the manual, its, its nature of, the, of it is to uh, interact with the actual user. So the, in order for it to get the most out, uh, the, the end user has to be able to click the icons, go around, use the tools, and so by having a how-to page, we're able to eliminate some of the confusion for first-time users, as digital manuals are also a very new thing, so not all parties might be able to understand its basic use. So as we go to the table contents here, you can see that I've outlined the six major areas that are located within the manual. So as we look at general public, within the actual document, if we click on the icon, it'll take us to the very big first section, which is the general public, obviously. So it, it details what will be covered in the section, as well as key words that, uh, will be, that are uh, located within the glossary, but are important to be aware of with, in terms of uh, being able to get the most out of each section. So first page of this section. As you can see, uh, we have the topic at top, which is the general public, and then the subtopic is the general layout. And as you can see below, we have the objective. So where did this objective come from, though? 
This objective uh, was developed through conversation with FIS as well as uh, LOCs and also through all the documents that we did research upon. And we concluded that this would be the most important uh, objective to get out of each of the particular areas. And below, we have the key points that have been summarized uh, within the documents to provide for an easier uh, uh, comprehension uh, to achieve your objectives. Now, something a little bit more unique to the manual, as you can see, is the suggested roles. So events, they're going to differ from size for each of them. You might have a large one in Kittsville, and you might have a lower one with a new organizing committee. So by providing a suggested role, we tell the organizer, hey, these are some positions that you should be aware of, who should be responsible for taking care of these areas. And now, this is not necessarily an exhaustive list, but it's a good basic start for them. And now, to the icons. So these icons, as I mentioned on the cover page, they're, each one of them is for a different discipline, and they pertain to the certain uh, topic that's uh, located in the box. So for this here, this is the World Cup Agreement. So if I was to press this icon, the icon will take me to the FIS website, and it'll give me more detailed information upon this topic. And we did not want to include all this information, obviously, because then the document within thousands of pages, and it wouldn't be useful to anybody. So these are located throughout the manual to help guide the users, and it's somewhat of breadcrumbs leading to the bigger cheese. <laughs> As well, so we also included photos and quotes throughout the entire manual, to instill some kind of excitement about what their event could be, and as well to, to create more of a dynamic approach to the manual. As often, such things are omitted, and it's just basic text, basic text, basic text, and they don't really get a feel for what their event could be. But providing the photos, as well as quotes, we can show them past, past athletes and LOCs who had success. Now, very similar to the general layout page that I did mention previously, but the thing to take away here is the notes section. So the notes section highlights key points that new organizers should be aware of when organizing their event. Now, they're not necessary for the basic execution of activities, but instead to improve their operations. So here, here's a perfect example of a visual that helps to explain what needs to be done in order to execute the activity. Now, if I was to take away this, and you were to read this, there's multiple issues that could go on. You might not understand the text, and you might not have any idea of how it's supposed to be arranged. But by using the visual as the main component, as, and using the text as supportive material, we're able to, we're able to get the best uh, possible organization out of the LOC. As well, here's just another example uh, of an athlete testing doping area. As you can see, this, is, uh, this includes the extreme example, which includes a blood test, which is not always relevant for all of the different disciplines. But uh, we wanted to give them the best idea of what it could possibly look like. So, as we go to the toolbox here, uh, we can see that we have uh, five major sections, which are, I only included the first one just to give you an idea of what it looked like, but we all have a manual that you can take a look at its entirety after the presentation if you like. Uh, but as you can see here, here are the key words that are, were mentioned earlier on the cover pages to each of the sections. So if you, have any, if, you don't, if you don't have an idea of what the word can mean, then you simply click the icon at the top of the page which says toolbox or glossary, and it'll take you down to this section without having to scroll through all of the document and waste precious time. And as we go on to the next toolbox element, we can see here, many times on the, on the hill, on the slopes, uh, organizers don't have the ability to take out the entire manual with them, digitally or tangible. So we decided to provide them with a basic uh, on-site World Cup planning sheet that they can print out to help them understand and be, act as a reminder in terms of who's responsible for which activities on which day and which of the week, the number and num number of staff that's necessary in order to complete it. As we head towards the final component of the toolbox, which is really the largest uh, and most important we find, is the, the checklist. So we started from two years out and we brought it all the way down to the, the day of execution. And all the elements you can see here, they've already been mentioned and described within the manual. But the difference is we provided a little bit more detail so that as uh, the organizer will not forget specific tasks and uh, as mentioned uh, many times they don't have reliable timelines. So this will help alleviate that and provide them with more uh, effective and efficient operation. 
So all that's great and dandy, right? But what's next? You have a manual, what are you gonna use with it? So having a manual is one thing, but success really begins with its implementation. So if we look at education, we think that uh, having FIS described to its uh, organizers at its seminars and its conferences and, and mention what the benefits of using such a document would be, that they'll be able to uh, appropriately teach them and, and uh, show them how to use it. But in tandem with an on-site application, through their such examples as their team captains meeting, we'll be able to uh, provide a great product and it'll be the key to success. But on a conclusion, the most important thing to worry about with such a project is one thing, and that's the end result. That's the stakeholder acceptance, and that's the stakeholder understanding. So as we see here, we've had a lot of positive feedback from the stakeholders we've already shown the document to within FIS and within the LOCs. And we believe that this tool will help improve the operations of LOCs, but also improve the consistency across all the disciplines for FIS. Thank you very much.